All right. Today we're going to go over uh, the lab, uh, which is tracking groundwater and, and trying to figure out where groundwater is coming from. And um, we're going to do a very simplified model here uh, using the town of Happyville, uh, which uh, in should be in your lab packet. If you are missing uh, this from your lab packet, please let me know uh, as soon as possible. Um, all right, so in this map, um, we have a series of uh, dots there. Each one of those square dots represents a boring, a, a, where, they, where the um, city of Happyville has been um, drawn down, basically think of a, a tube, and it pulled out the, the data, uh, it pulled out the rock. Now, uh, when we started looking at the information from this lab, it stated that the town of Happyville is underlined by 150 meters of sandstone. So that would look something like this, where we'd have the sandstone on top, 150 meters thick, approximately, and then underneath it is a layer of shale. And um, so when we start looking at this material, remember going back to our chapter 13, when we started looking at sand, uh, porosity and permeability. Actually, we also covered it in our mineral resources, that porosity is the volume of pore spaces. Permeability is the ability for water to seep through or move through materials. And when we start looking at things like sand, it has a water can move through very, very easily. Um, sand makes an excellent aquifer. Uh, when we start looking at shale, um, the shale is, uh, uh, has those little tiny particles that water has a hard time getting through because as those clay particles are, are um, all in the same alignment, those clay, uh, it's going to impede the movement of water. So uh, just as a reminder, when we started looking at these, uh, this lab. So uh, we have a little bit of a background for us. So what we're going to be doing is looking at these towns and um, looking at the data set. Now, on they did the first uh, A and B. For, so well A, um, we can see that the land elevation is uh, 626.8 meters above sea level. Uh, the depth to water is half a meter, so 0.5 meters. So as a result, the groundwater elevation, the elevation of the water surface is 626.3. Um, you can see how they did this uh, in the power, uh, in the lecture um, notes, I will uh, attach this uh, file if you'd like to uh, use an Excel spreadsheet to, to make your work life a little bit easier if you're familiar with doing that. Or you can just um, uh, use the printed page and do some subtraction. So um, what we're going to be doing here is mapping the elevation of the land sur or of the water surface. So when we start looking at this, um, we have point A. And if we look at point A there, it stated in the page that the elevation was 626.8 feet above sea level. So at point A here, change to a 626.3 feet above sea level. And then you would do this for each one of these, um, write small, and I would re recommend using pencil. Um, now you may say that's a lot of points and um, geologists would agree that that is a lot of points, but uh, the points are there to really, the more data you have, the better you are gonna be uh, at um, being able to do the next steps. Geologists would love to have this much data on these wells um, as, as what you guys are, are having right here. So um, I'm gonna refer you back to the first lab we did, which was looking at contour lines. And when we started looking at contour lines, um, might look something, uh, this is a, a, a image from uh, the first lab that you completed. And uh, if you look, you can see on these um, lines here, uh, this point right here 
told us the elevation everywhere along this line. And um, we're connecting lines of equal elevation. So if you need uh, a refresher, I'd go back to lab one. It has a link and it has a number of uh, click throughs that you can go back through. And uh, people did by and large really well on that one. So if you need help, a refresher on, on contour lines and contour intervals, I'd recommend going back and doing that. So um, once you have a bunch of elevations of the water table, you're going to contour the water table. So I've got a simulated one, uh, not your data set. Um, and we can see that on this data set, our um, points here are 14,375 and all the way down to looks like uh, 11,000. Um, 525. So when we start looking at uh, these, having a contour interval of one would be way too many lines. Having a contour line of um, 50 would still be way too many. So I'm going to draw a contour line uh, every thousand, um, thousand feet. So make sure you're following the directions in here to draw in your contour lines to get some good resolution. So when we start looking at this, um, I notice that I notice that this point right here is the high point. Uh, and so when we start looking at that, what we're going to when we start drawing contour lines, we're trying to connect points of equal elevation. And so um, what I've done in this image here is I've drawn a circle around everything that is well fourteen thousand feet. And so everything on one side of the line is above 14,000 feet. Everything on this side is less than 14,000 feet. So with an interval of All right. So the next thing that we need to do is draw in our next 1000 uh, unit line. So when we start looking at this one, um, it's the 13,000 because remember, we can't skip any contour line. So the next one would be a 13,000. Well, when I start looking at this, all of these points along here, along that 14,000 foot line are in fact individual points. So the 13,000 line would look something like this. Again, everything on this side would be less, everything on this side would be more. So the next line I would have to draw would be our 12,000 foot line. Now, with this 12,000 foot, um, everything on this side is less than 12,000. Everything on this side would be more than 12,000. So my 12,000 foot line would go in right there. The next thing that I would do is try to figure out which way my water would be flowing. Now, um, my in my example here, I have water flowing over in um, from elevations of high potentiometric pressure or high elevation to low elevation. Same thing over here, high to low. And so water is moving in two different directions. And so this is a groundwater divide, just like when we start looking at drainage divides. So when we started looking at this, if we had a contaminant, draw a contaminant in here. Let's say I had some contaminant over here. This, this house right here would be just fine because that contaminant would be going this direction. So this house over here would be more at risk than this one um, from this contaminant. So you can track which way contaminants are flowing. Uh, we can figure out how fast these materials are flowing. If we started looking at um, the, uh, we could use Darcy's law or, and, and measure the hydraulic conductivity of these different units of material, depending on if it was uh, say a sandstone, it would move a lot faster than if it was moving through clay. And so we could actually track the, to figure out how long it would take. Uh, we could actually uh, use this for a lot of different applications uh, beyond um, what we're, what we're looking at uh, here in our lab. So there's lots of practical applications when we start looking at which direction is this groundwater flowing, um, which way remediation might need to take place. Uh, it, right here, you would not ever have to uh, clean up this contaminant. But the first thing that whenever we clean up a contaminant is get rid of the source first, and then we could go back and 
figure out which direction is going to this contaminant would need to get cleaned up. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Uh, I would encourage you to, after you're completed with this lab, make sure you go back and answer the questions. Um, feel free to write on a separate page uh, because in some cases this, um, these spaces are a little con uh, condensed. But if you'd like to um, draw or type this out on a separate page, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, just make sure that when you upload your lab that you include the map of your completed map as well as your calculation. If you have any questions, please let me know.